Afternoon everyone. Welcome to my Rings Log and another page in my Fabric Fell book. I had a bit of an experimental idea for this one and I'm just going to see how it goes and hope it works out and if it doesn't well it'll have been an experiment and I'll have learned something from it but I'm hoping it'll work out and I'm hoping you'll enjoy it. See you later. This is the next page in my flower book. It's a really lovely pale blue. And the flower that I would like to do on here is honeysuckle. I have about four different honeysuckles in my garden. I absolutely love them. They always smell so beautiful, especially on an evening. And I really like this picture in my flower book of the honeysuckle twining through the hawthorn. And that's just how some of it goes to me. I have one twining in the hedge and one in an apple tree. And so I thought I'd try and recreate that type of a thing. The other thing was, I, you know, I like, I like the stump work and I like to do the relief. And my book is getting a bit thick. So I thought maybe a bit of low relief would work. And so this whole page is going to be quite a bit of an experiment. Uh, so I'll take the page out, which is the double page with the crane spills on the other side. I can work with the page out. And so my supplies, I, I'm going to, I've got a bit of um, flower tape, like florist tape. And I, I do have this pale creamy colour, which I thought I could paint. I've got some glue because I think I'll need it. I do have this yellow ribbon. It's not real silk ribbon, it's pretendy silk ribbon, but it's the right colour, so I'm going to use that. I've got a bit of green liney viscose fabric that was left over from something, and I've picked out a couple of colours, and actually I'm picking them out from my lovely tango. So these type of colours, I think I can use that. I think I can use that one. Um, I can probably use, might be able to use that pale pink. So I'm going to pick those out ready. That's a good one. That's a good one, I think. So I'll pick these out ready so that I've got them to hand. So first thing is I need to make the hawthorn stem and I really liked uh, the wrapping that I did when I did the the last bird, the sparrow, when I wrapped the stem, the, wrapped the silver for the perch on the bird feeder and that got me thinking about wrapping things for this page and so this this piece of wire here is just a wall tie wire from I think it was a garden I was at the builders were leaving these wall ties all over the place and I just gathered the ones up out of their skip and thought they'll be useful and brought them home so I have a little collection of a few of these and it, it's sort of bendy it's soft enough to do something with and I've used them for all sorts of things but today I'm just going to wrap it with a bit of this florist's tape I think I want it to be a bit thicker because it'll make a good base for whatever I'm going to wrap on top because if I'm going to wrap wool oh, I, th I forgot to say my supplies were wool as well yeah i've got wool i've got my embroidery wool, tapestry walls so the tapestry walls will wrap on this really nicely now that the florist's tape on but i just want to give it a bit of a thickness so i'm just going to carry on wrapping the main thing is this has got to be a bit low relief because i don't want to make my page overly thick but once the idea was in my head I just have to run with it because it's what I want to do. So I think I just sort of drew, I drew out a very basic idea of where I wanted things to go. So I'm going to 
have my hawthorn coming through from here. In fact, I'll get it in the shape already to there. And then another piece of hawthorn. And what I'll, what I'll do is really should get a pair of pliers there. I'll just shape it, but I'm going to keep everything quite flat. And I'm going to get my wool and start and wrap it. And the thought was that if I just put the tiniest bit of glue on, maybe the wool would also make the idea of the thorns. So I'll just start myself off with a tiny bit of glue. Put the wool on and start and wrap once I'm going. It's actually quite satisfying. Every so often I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on and then leave a loop that I'm going to do something with later. If this works it will be a miracle because I'm not sure whether it will work. So I'll loop over there, leave the little loop, carry on wrapping. Make sure the wraps are nice and tight. It's a bit dark for Hawthorn, but I didn't have a more appropriate colour. So I've wrapped right up the stem. I've got my loops. I've secured it with a bit of glue. I'm going to cut my loops like that. And then I'm going to leave that one like a little nobble, I think. And then I'm going to put a bit of glue on my fingers. And I'm just going to twiddle these to points. And then once it's dry, I can cut them down. And they will be the thorns on the hawthorn. I told you it was experimental. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, really. And I'm going to make another one of them with this bit. Really happy with the way these hawthorn stems have come out. I ended up using fray stopper, which is obviously as it says to stop frays. I actually don't use it normally. It's just been in my stash for flipping years. Um, and so I put bits of that on and kept twisting my wool until I've ended up with that quite hawthorny looking sort of a stem. So they're going to be put on there and I need to make the leaves. I've wrapped another piece of wire. I've wrapped it with a bit of my floral tape. I don't feel I need to wrap this with thread. This is going to be the honeysuckle stem and it's probably about the right colour for what I need. So I'm not going to do anything else with that yet. But what I do need to do is make the leaves. So I've got this lovely piece of green fabric and what I'd like to do is have wired leaves that I can attach to the stem. And so what I thought would be the easiest to do would be to, I'm going to sew this bit of fabric onto the wire like this. I can go right down there I think, I don't want to waste my material. And I'm just going to over sew it onto the wire. I'll bend the tip down over my thread so that I'm hiding any little cut ends. Just using a green out of my stash, I'll bend that tip down and over sew. And hopefully when I open it up, it's going to make this, the looks of a vein. But the wire will be on the underneath. It's not going to be shown. I don't want the wire to be shown. Just see if this is going to work. I haven't actually, it's the first time I've tried this, so I open it up. Oh, not bad at all. Okay, so I think if I cut that off and then I sew another bit onto the other side, over sew this piece on. And just see if I can manipulate these into a pair of leaves. And if I can, I'll make two or three pairs of them. 
And now cut this into a honeysuckle leaf shape from the bottom. But I feel that I could attach them. I might be still a bit big. Let's have a look. If I attach them to my stem, I've now got leaves that I can manipulate and put onto my honeysuckle stem. I think that's going to work quite well. So I'm going to go ahead and make another two or three pairs of leaves. I like the vein up the middle. It means they've got they've got a proper curve, but they're going to lie quite flat. But I can also move them about as I want. I'm going to go and make some more of them. I've made three pairs of leaves all together. And I've attached them to the main stem just because by cutting down the width of my tape into half. And I've just gone back down and trapped the wires in. There's the back. You can see my gold wires and my stitching. And there's the front. And so I'm happy with that as it is. So I feel that I will be um, possibly... Trying to make that look like it's coming through like this and wrapping around the stems and something like that. I can bring that I can bring that leaf forward or not. But I, all of a sudden, I've got the start of a really good low relief page. So I don't want it to be too thick. So all of this will end up being stitched onto my page, I think. Very carefully, because I've got the crane's bills on the back. <laughs> I've just realised that, actually. We'll see. Anyway, that's... That looks like a good start to me for the honeysuckle. I think I'd really love to do this life size now. This is such a tiny page to try and work on. Why did I think to do my flower book so small? I'm going to do another whole stem and that stem is going to get some leaves on but also a couple of flowers. I've made my second stem and I'm really now realising how limited I am by the size of the page. I think I'm just going to go for one beautiful honeysuckle flower. So before I can do anything else, I really need to make the flower. And I'm obviously restricted by not being able to sew through. So I'm going to make a base. But the main thing I wanted to show you now is how I feel I'm going to make the honeysuckle. So I've got my paper covered wire, I've got I've half the flower tape and I am going to just start and make the shape of how the honeysuckle buds are before they open. So I need it thick at the top end. I'm just going to carry on putting that on until I've got an appropriate shape. I've now got the really nice sort of the thick end of the of the honeysuckle bud. I can bend that to make the shape and then I can use this bit of wire to go through into whatever I'm making the honeysuckle flower on. I'm going to take some of my spare threads. Okay, it's going to stick. I'll just cut this down. Make it easier for me to work with. And get an appropriate another colour, which is this one, I think. And I'm going to wrap this bud as neatly and as beautifully as I can. And then use my needle to stitch it in. Just 
There we go. Once it's going, I can twist. And I feel like I'll be able to get, because I've got one or two different shades of the same sort of colour, if I do them all just a slightly different shade, I'll get good variants. I feel that once I get a few of them going, I can manipulate them into the shape of the honeysuckle buds. I'm pleased to say that I've got all my little buds done and I've made them in a variety of colours. I'm not actually sure how big I need them yet. But now I need to make some open flowers before I can start and put it together. And this is where I'm going to use this, which is polyester embroidery ribbon that I've had for many, many years. And today I've got the absolutely perfect colour. So I'm going to use the pale pink ones. And what I feel I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a piece of the yellow ribbon. I know this is looking a bit weird, but I'm going to sew that onto there because I think it's going to be easier to craft once it's sewn on. Because once I've just got tiny pieces, it'll be more difficult. Oh, that might... Uh, actually, I've got a knot on there. But I think, I think that's going to be quite good. So I'm just going to leave it. Because they can be stamens. So, I'll just take this back through again. I didn't realise I needed stamens until that knot went in. That was just serendipity. So I'll cut them and they can be my stamens. And then I'll cut the top of this into a rounded shape. And then the individual petals. And then the bottom petal needs to be narrow. I'll cut it narrow. I hope this really does work. And then I can, over the back of my scissor, do these scissors. I can just give this a bit of a curl. Just hold it. Give a bit of a curl. Yep. I hope I'm in camera, I can't even see it. And then curl my... Oh, I think, I think that'll work. I'll alter the stamens as I want. Actually, actually I think, I think for the size I'm doing, that's probably, that's probably more than okay. So I think I'm going to do three flowers, three open flowers. I need them to be a bit longer. And then all of these will go in to make the buds. And I thought about how I was going to put them onto the page. And I've actually gone and got my bit of pelmet violin that I use. And I'm going to make a little circle that all the wires are going to go through. That will make the very centre of the honeysuckle. And through that I'll be able to sew it on. Just cutting that just to make a suggestion that the petals are there and on this bit just narrow narrow the bottom petal down. I think the shape of that is a honeysuckle flower. If I show you that it really works. Put them all together, put them all through as one. Then my three flowers. Like that. And just twist them a bit so I can get them through the hole. So now... I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do now. Now, see if it's going to be too big. Now I think it's going to be alright. So now I will um, I, don't, 
I don't actually know. Um, what I'll do is I'll, st I'll trim the violin, which is now keeping them all together. Start and bend the flowers out. And put them the way I think they have to go. Remembering all the time that I'm supposed to be doing a flat flower. So they'll bend that way, I think. Oh, those little buds really do work. I need my green French knots in the middle. I think I'll just try one more of them. It's probably enough. Okay, oh, that's, that's okay. So now I just need to work out how to put all of this onto the book in a way that looks nice <laughs> rather than a way that looks silly. So I'm going to wrap the, wrap the wire, wrap the green thread round. So I'll cut them off and then I can start and put the whole thing together as one. I'll just wrap this tape. until I can get the honeysuckle attached. Now it just needs a bit of manipulation, but it's all on wires. And I want it to be flat to my book. I think I want it to look like it is actually coming around and under. I'm going to put it around there. Slowly and surely, it is sort of getting to what I would like it to be. I think I'm going to take a little bit of manipulation on here. When I've got it all sorted out, I'll show you the finished result. Well, I have got it attached to the page. As you can see, I've um, tacked it down over the th through the wall and through the back, but I haven't come through onto that page. I've just managed to get my needle in between the two pages. And I'm okay with it. I think it's one of my least successful pages and I think that's just because my ambition was too big for the size of the page. I'd really like to do this honeysuckle again and I'd like to do it life size and I'd like not to be restricted by this little page which only measures about, uh, what is it, it is um, the, pe the piece I'm working on is sort of about five inches by four. So Having said that, I really like the the way I've done the hawthorn and the twine, but again, it's a bit thick, but that's okay. And I am just going to write down here, I've managed to keep a little space to put sweet honeysuckle. I'm quite pleased you can't see the pelmet violin. I touched it with a bit of green paint. Uh, but all of the everything else has worked really well, and I really I do really like the wrapped honeysuckle buds. It's the fact that I've had to keep it flat rather than make it into three D. Uh, that's the only thing that's bothering me. I think. However, we shall just go onwards and write sweet honeysuckle. Frightened I spell it wrong now. There we go. Sweet honeysuckle. Finished. I'm actually wondering whether I need to do another outside because my book's getting quite thick. Well, here it is. I hope you let me know in the comments what you think. Um, from my point of view, I think it's a little bit less successful than some of my other pages. And 
and that's only because I really wanted to do it in a bigger size and I felt constrained by the small size of the page. So I do feel that eventually I'm going to revisit the honeysuckle and I'm either going to make quite a big picture and where the honeysuckle can really be life-size and it can be properly 3D or make a honeysuckle sculpture that's maybe in a plant pot and they're able to sit on the windowsill or something because I really did enjoy doing it and the most successful part for me was the with the leaves and the branches um, and the, the pieces of honeysuckle buds. It's the fact that I've had to flatten it all down to put it in the book that, that for me is not quite as good as what I was expecting or hoping. The other thing is my book's getting quite thick and if I'm not careful I'm going to have to redo my whole outside to make a deeper spine. Uh, so that's something I need to think about and try and keep the other things flat. But when I started my book, I didn't actually realise what direction it was going to go in. And again, that's something for doing something over a long term where your ideas change and things happen and you start to be a bit more brave with doing other things. Um, so my ideas of what I was going to do have changed. I thought everything would be flat embroidered or flat like the crane's bills and really it hasn't been and so it may be that I just keep everything else flat or it may be that I redo my outsides and make a deeper spine for this one but I'll know in the future that really what I really really enjoy doing are these low relief uh, pages uh, whether it's birds or flowers. Anyway Please press the like button if you'd like that and subscribe if you'd like to. Thank you very much for all your comments and I look forward to hearing what you think about this one. Um, and I've been absolutely uh, so pleased to see all the comments coming in about my little sparrow on the bird feeder. You really, really, everybody's really, really loved it. And I didn't actually realise at the time how beautiful he really was because you really close up with it. It wasn't until I sort of stepped back from him that I realised how lovely he turned out. And I thought you wouldn't like the fact that I'd done him on the feeder. But that's the way he looked like. That's the way I see him when I look out into my garden. And that's what I really wanted to do. So it really thrills me to my heart to know that you've all loved the little sparrow too. Thank you very much for that. I really, really, I've loved reading all of your comments about it. Um, the other thing to say is that I'm not here next week. I'm going to Scotland um, for a week. And it's really, it's because it's the anniversary of my husband passing away. And I just need to be somewhere else other than home. Now, I have actually uh, done some little bits of videos to leave and schedule for while I'm away. Obviously, I'm not going to be, I won't have my setup for filming things um, like I do when I'm here. And while I'm away, to do something positive while I'm away, I'm actually going to be taking part in an advanced spoon carving workshop. And I do carve spoons, I haven't done a huge amount, but I do like carving spoons, and I've got my own carving tools. And so I'm going up there and I'm sure I'll be filming some little bits and pieces with my phone or you might find some little photographs come onto Instagram of what I'm doing while I'm away. So I'll be back doing the next bird and the next flower page when I come back at the end of September. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy what I've left you with, which is a couple of other projects that I've been on with and one bit of a repair really uh, that's how i'll try and think about it and in the meantime thank you very much for being down the other end of my camera lens and i'll see you when i come back thank you everyone for supporting me and just bye from my room as well for now thank you <laughs>